My friends, we gather together celebrating the culmination of the liturgical year with the solemnity of Christ the King. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My friends, as we gather together, we remember as this church year draws to a close, it's always that challenge for us to call to mind the events of the last year. It is Thanksgiving weekend as well for us to be grateful for those blessings we've received and shared throughout the year, but also a recognition that all things point to the culmination of all things, to the fulfillment of the kingdom of God and to the promises that Christ has revealed to us. We pray for each other and we pray on this journey of faith that God will continue to strengthen us in mercy and in grace. Lord Jesus, you came so that all things might sub be subjected to you. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you yourself, subject yourself to the will of the Father that all things might be fulfilled in you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your gift of the Holy Spirit is from you and the Father that we might find our way to you in the joy and promise of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so it is that we give glory to God this day as we say glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant that the whole of creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from, raised from the dead. 
the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers or sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of the, these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Has anyone ever heard or used the expression, oh, you just threw somebody under the bus? All of us have probably at some point in time uh, at least heard it, if not used it. And oftentimes it is uh, with a sense of general good humor that the recognition is, is that sometimes we've passed the buck to someone else or encouraged someone else to take responsibility for uh, a particular action or a set of circumstances. 
To throw someone under the bus means that every once in a while you can sort of hear the distant rumbling of a bus and, or an 18-wheeler and the occasional bump bump as, uh, as the tires go over the top. There is always that kind of idea in the back of our minds. And we do so with good humor, and we also recognize how, uh, how prevalent and how um, uh, poignant that timely kind of expression is in our world. There does seem to be a great deal of passing the buck back and forth and the movement of responsibility from one to another. But there is a reason and a method to my madness, because one of the words that I used in the penitential rite, which appears in that second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, uh, the, let, the word that appears is subject. And it is one of those things. The one who had everything, who, to, for whom everything was made subject, and the one who ultimately, in, in the end, when even the final enemy is conquered, even this one, when all things have been subjected to him, and he, in turn, in the end, will make himself subject to the one who brought all of this and gave all of this to the Son. And all things will come to their fulfillment, and God will be all in all. But that word subject means, essentially, that one is thrown into a set of circumstances or thrown under a set of circumstances. To be subjected to something means that there will be something that will have some level of power or authority over us, or the level of circumstances will be such that it will be difficult for us to be able to separate ourselves out from them. And to be subjected to something or to be subject to something means that we offer ourselves under the rule or the guidance of, in this case, the one who is the shepherd, that first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, or from the responsorial psalm, to be subjecting ourselves or putting ourselves under the direction of under the guidance of, under the power and authority of something other than ourselves. It's a challenge because every single one of us contains a five-year-old child who wants to stomp their foot and say, you are not the boss of me. And I am going to do what it is that I choose to do and that, that as we uh, grow up and as we take our place in society, we want to be able to say that we are kings or queens, masters of all that we survey, everything we will direct, and it will be according to our lights. But the Feast of Christ the King tells us that that's not even true for Jesus. That second reading reminds us that even Jesus, even after death, finally is subjected to the will of Christ, to the will of the one who lays down his life, who endures death, who rises in order to bring us to the fullness and promise of the kingdom, even at that moment when death itself has been conquered and Christ comes again, even then at that moment Christ himself will offer himself and make himself subject to the will of God the Father. And all things will be all in all. It's a pretty profound kind of way of looking at the world and reminding ourselves that so often we like to deny that we are subject to anything. The real nature of uh, our lives as Christians is to recognize that we are all, all, under the authority of this Christ who comes, all of us. And to follow in faith means also to take seriously the challenges that are given to us. And I'm not sure that there is any stronger challenge anywhere in the words of Scripture in any of the Gospels than this passage from Matthew's Gospel. 
that separation of the sheep and the goats and that struggle somewhere along the line. When did we see you hungry and give you food? Or when did we refuse to give you food? When did we see you hungry? And that challenge is trying to figure out how in the world do we understand ourselves in that relationship? There is no stronger challenge for social justice and for charity, for kindness, for an outpouring of a gift of self than this particular passage from Matthew's Gospel. Nobody wants to be in the company of the goats. We always want to be in the midst of the sheep. But what can we say about these sheep? Not that they are so easily controlled and manipulated, which is oftentimes the reputation that sheep have in, in uh, most people's minds, but a recognition that to be subject means that they are not necessarily going to be ruled with an iron fist, but that they will be gently, tenderly cared for and pastured. That image, those images from the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, in great green and rich grassy pastures, the Lord will lead us beside restful waters. There is no sheep drover here. There is no constant uh, hurrying along and pushing the herd of sheep into these green pastures or along these restful waters, but, but instead is a very gentle and kind of pastoral image, but it is Christ's promise that he will tend us, and you can hearken back to that first reading from the prophet Ezekiel. What is it like for the shepherd to tend the sheep? It's not about uh, taking that shepherd's staff and poking the sheep and trying to get them to move in a particular direction. But the one who is that shepherd is the one who will bind up the wounded, who will heal those who are sick, who will take care of those who are weak and those who are oftentimes most vulnerable in the midst of the flock. He will bring back those who have gone astray and, if we're honest with ourselves, Truly, every single one of us at some point in time, and some of us may even be straying, even while I'm preaching at this moment, the challenge for us is to recognize that this shepherd who comes is not one who is doing so with a kind of power and authority that is forceful, but one who tends and gently guides and opens up new pastures for us all the time. To be subject to this one is no hardship. Instead, it is something to be recognized as something beautiful, as tender, because the shepherd is not going to want us to wander into trouble, to wander into the kinds of thickets where we'll get ourselves stuck He's not going to lead us into places where we can get caught in rapidly flowing water and where we can find ourselves submerged and potentially drowned. That's not the way of the shepherd. The challenge is to recognize that this shepherd and our recognition of where we fit in this scheme of things, there is one who has more power, who has greater compassion than we have for ourselves and for the ones we love. There is one who can tenderly heal us when we cannot heal ourselves. There is one who will continue to bind up when we're unable to do so. This shepherd, this one to whom we are subject, who we are under in terms of power and authority, this one himself, when the entire flock is gathered together and is brought into the place where our God intends, then when death itself even is conquered, then this shepherd will offer himself as well to the one to whom he is subject to as well. 
We celebrate this feast of Christ the King, but we acknowledge that there are so many things we are powerless over. There are so many things that we are unable to do for ourselves because we are so limited by time and space, but also by the struggles that we face in our own lives. Those weaknesses and those areas where we sometimes find ourselves troubled. We find ourselves, and in humility, can say, yes, yes, Lord. We are your sheep. We belong to you. Lead us and guide us into the pastures that will be verdant and green, alongside the waters that are restful, bind up our wounds, heal our brokenness, gather us together. There will be no challenge for us because having been the recipients of all of those things, that tender care, that gentle mercy, having been subjected to this shepherd, we've seen the example of what it means to be Christian in the world. So it's not going to be so much about whether or not uh, we, we are powerful or not, because we will already find ourselves in that right relationship with God, and we will feed the hungry, and we will provide water for those who are thirsty, clothes for those who are naked, healing and medicine for those who are sick. And oftentimes, as I preach at different funeral liturgies, when this particular scripture passage is used, oftentimes we won't even recognize when we're doing it, we won't even see it because it will become so much a part of who we are when we see ourselves in that right relationship with our God through Christ, when we subject ourselves to the shepherd, to the one who will lead us and guide us, to the one who is king, and when even death itself is conquered, the one who will subject himself as well to his God and Father great and glorious blessing that is for us to be sheep of this flock and to have this Christ as our King. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we bring our prayers and our petitions before our God today. Grant our leaders in faith the courage and strength to reveal the promise of the kingdom by their work for justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give compassion and wisdom to our world leaders that they might work for justice and healing for the most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Give each of us the gifts of humility and love of neighbor that will allow us to see the needs of others and place them above our own as we are guided to the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Help each of us to be people of peace who will be signs of reconciliation that we may be more united in justice and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, for the hungry and thirsty, for those in prison, those who are homeless and abandoned, grant us all the safety, shelter, and love that we need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Thanksgiving weekend, fill us with that spirit of gratitude which helps us to see beyond these present days of challenge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those individual intentions we bring to Mass with us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Raise up all our departed brothers and sisters. This week we especially remember the repose of the souls of Carol Tietenheimer and Maria Pilgrim and all those whose names are written in our book of remembrance. Grant everlasting joy in the peace of your kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, light for all ages, you sent your Son to be the revelation of your love and the promise for all peoples. Building on the foundations of those who have gone before us, you send us to be the sign of your kingdom for future generations. Bless us with the spirit of generosity that we might accomplish your will in all things. Help us to build our future in concert with your Holy Spirit, carrying the light that you have entrusted to us as a sign to the world of your kingdom. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins and bring me to everlasting life. My friends, pray that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be made acceptable to the Lord our God. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's very beginning, 
you have ceaselessly been at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, pour out upon them the power of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed upon the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the whole human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those whom you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the, with, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. And longing for the kingdom of God, for its fulfillment, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And wherever we happen to be, let us share with one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a very brief announcement or two. Uh, the first of which is uh, that mandate to reach out to the poor is, is oftentimes uh, an invitation for us as we reflect upon uh, the Catholic Charities Christmas collection that is taking place uh, during the Advent season and uh, most people have already received mailings from them but just uh, keep in mind there's a variety of different ways in which we can continue to reach out to those who are hungry and thirsty and need additional clothing and help during this time. Uh, our parish continues to make a variety of different uh, outreach efforts through the local community and other additional organizations. So please uh, just remember those who oftentimes do not have enough at this time. Also, next weekend is the St. Nick's Festival. So if uh, you're not able to be with us this weekend and you might be able to join us next weekend, please do keep in mind after each of the Sunday Masses, there is the opportunity to gather together for breakfast as well as, uh, as participate in all of the, the different activities that, uh, that the school offers for the St. Nick's Festival. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.